What's up guys, I'm Eric from TechSode TV. This is an iPhone 11 Pro Max, and this is the brand new Google Pixel 4 XL in the oh so orange color. But to be honest, in person, it definitely looks a lot more pink than orange. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the fastest way to transfer all of your data from either an iPhone or an Android phone to the Pixel 4 or 4 XL. Before you start the transfer, there's a couple settings you need to change on the iPhone. So go ahead and tap settings, go to messages, and disable iMessage. Then go back, go to FaceTime, and disable FaceTime as well. You also want to scroll back up, go to General, and scroll through here to see if there's anything listed as Device Management. If there is, you're going to need to disable that as well. Once that's all taken care of, you're good to start the transfer. So this is the screen you're met with when you first turn on the Pixel 4 or 4XL. Just go ahead and tap Start. The first thing it'll ask you to do is to insert your SIM card, so let's go ahead and do that now. To do that, just grab the SIM removal tool that came with your Pixel, insert it into this hole on the left side of the phone, press down a bit, and that tray is going to pop out. Now just go ahead and pull that tray all the way out. Then use the same tool to take the SIM card out of your iPhone. Just press down, then pull the tray out, pop the SIM out of the iPhone tray, and slide it into the Pixel tray, and slide the tray back in. Once the SIM card's in, it's going to automatically recognize it and take it to the next step, which is connecting to a Wi-Fi network. So just select your network and connect to it. Once you're connected, the phone is going to check for any updates. And once it's done installing updates, it's going to ask if you want to copy any data from an old phone to your new phone. Now here is where your old iPhone or Android phone come into play. Start by tapping Next. And since we do have an old iPhone or Android phone, we're going to go ahead and tap Next again. And all we need to do is plug the iPhone into the Pixel. And there's two ways to do that. The first is with a USB-C to lightning cable. You just plug the USB-C end into your Pixel and the lightning end into your iPhone. But if you don't have one of these cables, you can use this USB-C to regular USB adapter that came with your Pixel. You just plug the adapter into the Pixel, then grab the cable that came with your iPhone and plug it in between the Pixel and your iPhone. If for some reason you don't have a lightning cable, there's still a way to transfer things, but you're gonna be able to transfer way more data if you use the cable, so it's much better to just wait until you have access to a lightning cable instead of using this other method. But if you really wanna use a different method, you can get to it by tapping this no cable option here. Since I have a USB-C to lightning cable, I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. I'll plug one end into the Pixel and the other end into the iPhone. Once you do that, you'll get a prompt on the iPhone asking you to trust the device. Go ahead and tap trust, then enter in your passcode. Once you've entered your passcode, you'll see on your Pixel that the phones are connected. Tap next. While the Pixel is scanning your old device to see what it can transfer, it's gonna let you continue to set it up. So go ahead and sign into your Google account now. Once you've logged into your Google account, you'll get to this screen here. And this is basically just a progress bar with how far along the Pixel is with figuring out everything that it needs to transfer from the old device. And depending on the storage capacity of the old device, this can take a pretty long time. So this is the 512 gigabyte version of the iPhone, which means this is probably gonna take more than 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes to finish looking through all of that data to figure out what exactly it can transfer. And this progress bar can be misleading. So if it looks like it's been stuck for five or 10 minutes, don't worry about it. Just let it keep running, go do something else, come back maybe 10 or 15 minutes later, and it should be ready. Once the Pixel's done scanning your iPhone, you're gonna get a bunch of options of things that you can transfer. So the first thing is apps. And if you actually tap that, you can see all the apps that it's going to transfer. From here, I can scroll down and deselect any applications that I might not want to transfer or I can just uncheck this box and deselect all of them, then only select the applications that I do want to transfer. I personally want to transfer everything, so I'm just gonna leave that checked. Now I'm just gonna tap the back button to see what else I could transfer. Looking down a bit further, you can see that the Pixel found 33 gigabytes worth of photos and videos on the iPhone, and that is actually all of the photos and videos that I do have on the iPhone. I didn't miss any of them. However, this can't find photos and videos that are saved to your iCloud account. It can only find those photos and videos that are saved directly on your iPhone. Another nice feature is you could transfer just the messages without the attachments, so that won't include any pictures or videos that anybody sent you. Or alternatively, if you don't want the messages, but you still want to keep all the pictures and videos, you can do that too by just unchecking messages and keeping message attachments checked. Scrolling down a bit further, you can see some things that are synced automatically, so it's not going to actually try to transfer any of that. And down here, there's a little disclaimer that says some of your data may not transfer to your Pixel 4. So if I tap learn more, it's going to tell me some of the things that might not transfer. 
So apps and app data, as you can see, there were some iOS specific applications, those can't transfer. App data won't transfer either unless it's an app that has a login, because then you can just log in and transfer all of your data that way. This is what I had mentioned earlier. If photos or videos are stored on your iCloud and not on the phone itself, you can't transfer any of that using this method. Same goes for files and documents. If that's in the iCloud, you can't transfer that, but if it's on the phone, you can transfer it. And unfortunately, you can't transfer device settings like your Wi-Fi passwords. So if you're transferring from an Android device to a Pixel, then you would be able to transfer all of your Wi-Fi passwords. And that's just helpful because you don't have to ask your friends what their Wi-Fi passwords are again the next time you go over. Something else it won't transfer is DRM protected music. It also won't transfer any accounts that aren't Google accounts. So let's say you have like a Yahoo or a Comcast account or something like that on your iPhone. It's not gonna transfer those account details over. The same goes for third-party calendar services. If it's not part of Google or iCloud, then it can't transfer any of those contacts or calendars. And the last thing you can't transfer is bookmarks from Safari. However, I feel like that's something that would be pretty easy to transfer after setting up your Pixel. Once you've figured out everything you want to transfer, go ahead and tap copy. But before you do, look up here and you can see an estimate of how long the Pixel thinks it's going to take to transfer all of that data. So if I transfer all my photos and videos, it thinks it's going to take about 25 minutes to do the full transfer. But since I already have all my photos and videos backed up, I'm just going to uncheck that. And you can see it drops all the way down to two minutes for the transfer. And in case you're wondering what this 103 gigabytes means, this is the 128 gigabyte version of the Pixel. And I have 103 gigabytes available for the transfer. If you're transferring from an Android device, it's the same process, but you do get a few more things you can copy. So this is the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And as you can see here, if I scroll down a little bit further, I also get the option to transfer device settings and call history, which weren't options on the iPhone. Another important thing to note is that if you have a micro SD card installed in your old device, the Pixel will see that, but it's not going to split it up into different sections. So even though I have photos and videos both on the micro SD card and the internal storage on my Note 10 Plus, it all shows up in one category here on my Pixel. Now that I'm done making my selections, I'm just going to tap copy and everything is just going to copy right on over. Fortunately, this is all just going to run in the background and I can continue setting up my Pixel without having to wait for this to finish. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap next. From here, you can turn on backups and location services and also decide whether or not you want to send usage and diagnostic data to Google to help them improve their services. Once you're done making your selections here, tap accept, then agree to the legal terms in order to use the phone. Next, it's going to ask you to set up a PIN, but if you tap screen lock options, you can also choose to set a pattern or password. And if you don't want to lock it at all, you can just tap skip. I personally like locking my devices, so I'm going to go ahead and set a pattern. Next, you'll be asked to set up face unlock, so go ahead and tap next and set that up. Once that's done, tap done. From here, you can finish the setup process or just start using your Pixel and get a reminder later to finish setting everything up. But it doesn't take that long, so I recommend just continuing with the setup. Next, you'll be asked if you want to use voice match. This just allows you to use your Google Assistant while the screen is off. But it does mean that your phone is always going to be listening for the Google Assistant command. Next, you'll be asked if you want to turn on the squeeze gesture to access Google Assistant. Then it's going to let you select how hard you have to squeeze the sides of the phone to activate Google Assistant. And you can even test it real time here. So you can go ahead and squeeze it to see how much pressure it takes. Change the sensitivity, squeeze it again, see the difference, change it again, squeeze again and feel the difference. And basically just find something that feels comfortable for you. After that, you'll be asked to turn on quick gestures, which uses a little radar sensor that's built into the top of the phone. And this allows you to do things like skip backwards or forwards through songs by waving your hand over the screen, or even doing things like snoozing alarms. Another feature enabled by this radar is the ability to turn your screen on just by reaching over to the phone. This is actually a pretty neat feature and I do recommend turning this one on. Next, you can add another email account, turn on the ability to identify music around you. This is another one of those always listening things where your phone is always gonna be listening to ambient sounds. And if it hears something that's a song, it's actually going to tell you right on your lock screen what that song is. If the font is too big or small for you, you can go ahead and change that here. Review additional apps are extra apps that are gonna be installed on your phone. And you can go ahead and uncheck these if you don't want them installed. Now, since I inserted an AT&T SIM card, the Pixel figured that out and suggested three applications that I might wanna install from AT&T. I don't use those applications, so I'm just gonna uncheck them. And control lock screen info is just another way to make things a little bit more private. So on your lock screen, you can have all of your notification content show up. So if someone texts you and you go to your lock screen, you'll actually see the full contents of that message on the lock screen. Alternatively, you can show the sensitive content only when the phone's unlocked, or you could not show notifications at all on your lock screen. Once you're done going through that, tap done for now.
And this is asking if you want to receive emails from Google to stay up to date on their latest products and features. Now that I've finished setting everything else up, you can see that I only have one minute left before the Pixel finishes transferring everything over from the iPhone. Now, unfortunately, from this point, you do have to wait for the transfer to finish before you can actually use your Pixel. So if you see that there's something like 10 or 15 minutes left, go ahead and just set this to the side and come back sometime later. Once the transfer finishes, you'll get this notification that tells you you can disconnect the cable and you'll get a quick summary of everything that transferred. Once you tap done, it's gonna give you a reminder to keep iMessage turned off on your old phone so that you can keep getting SMS messages from iPhone users. And if you wanna learn more about that, you can go to this address here to get some help with that. Just tap okay to acknowledge it. Google's gonna add the finishing touches. Then it's gonna walk you through some of the basics like how to go home from an application, how to switch between applications, and how to go back. Once you go through the tutorial, just swipe up and you're all set to go on your brand new Pixel. If you're watching this video after you set up your Pixel but you didn't transfer the data from your old device, you may still be able to do that. Just pull your notification shade down twice, then tap this settings gear here. And at the top, you may have an option that says finish setting up Pixel. If you don't see that option there, you can go ahead and tap this search bar at the top and just type the word finish. And if it doesn't show up in these search results, you are going to have to factory reset your Pixel in order to transfer all the data from your old device. To do that, just search for the word reset, tap erase all data or factory reset, tap it again, then tap erase all data at the bottom and follow the prompts. Let me know why you switched to the Pixel and what your previous phone was down in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like the video if you liked it, share it if you loved it, and subscribe for more in-depth tech reviews. And while you're at it, smack that notification bell so you can be the first to know when the videos drop. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.